Guys, we just found out we're losing $5,400 on this fix and flip that I just had a mobile notary sign with me. What I wanna do is I wanna show you why we lost this money. I wanna break down, down in the studio, step by step, what we could have done, what we should have done, and what we didn't do to save ourselves from being in a bad situation. What I'm gonna do is this is part one, and then in part two, my wife is gonna come in because she's my realtor, and she's gonna come in and break down why we lost this money. Let's get to it. Hey guys, my name is Pace Morby. Welcome back to the channel. Like I said before, we're gonna jump into how we got our asses handed to us and lost $5,400 on this fix and flip. So why did we buy it in the first place? This property is in Scottsdale, super desirable area, but people as seasoned as we are, don't you think we would just know better not to buy deals that are super skinny, meaning there's not enough meat on the bone? Well, Yes, the answer is yes, we should have known better and we actually did know better. My partner Cody did not wanna buy this deal and I pushed him on this and here's the reasons why. So number one, we wanted to create and establish a long-term relationship with another wholesaler and fix and flipper in town. And so we bought this deal based on a relationship. Okay, and why, why would I do that? Well, because sometimes we'll go buy five fix and flips from one wholesaler knowing that three of them are not gonna be great and that the other two are gonna be actually pretty decent and make up for maybe some of the skinnier deals that we did on the other three. That truly is how competitive it is in this market. We have to buy some deals that are not the greatest in order to show our wholesalers and suppliers that we actually close, we do what we say we're gonna do, right? So good situation, even though this wholesaler sent this deal to us and we lost $5,400, I don't blame him. I go right back to him, I go, hey man, even though we lost money on your last deal, please let me know when you have another opportunity for us, we still wanna buy from you. That goes a long way with wholesalers, especially when you're not gonna yell at them and scream at them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, we wanted to establish a relationship. That's the first reason why we did it. In fact, we did a deal a year ago, last summer, with a good friend of mine, Doug Hopkins, and it was a skinnier deal. He sent us the deal and we go, oh man, you know, most we're gonna make on this is 10, 15 grand. And by the time we finished the renovation, we actually made closer to 37, 39 grand. And so those types of things happen all the time. And that is actually the second reason why we bought the deal is that we were ultra confident that the deal was going to make more than what the spreadsheet told us. When we first looked at the deal, the most amount of money we were looking to make was $10,000. $10,000, guys, is not enough to make on a fix and flip. And here's why. Number one is that, that it could take longer than you think. Two, things come up like an HOA assessment, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit, and all of that $10,000 can easily be wiped away. Now, there's a hundred other things that my wife is going to talk about in part two, which is what are all the things that can go wrong on a deal? She's the one that lists all of our properties. She deals with all the things that go wrong. And so I want her to tell you all the major things to watch out for on a fix and flip. So we were confident. We thought we could make the 10 grand. The market is trending upward. We might even be able to make upwards of $15,000. The third reason we did it is to keep our people busy. Yes, truly. When you have good contractors and you have good crews, the last thing you want to do is put yourself in a situation where these crews and contractors are not busy from your work because what do they do? They go find work other places and that's the last thing you want to do. Our crews have been with us for eight years and they've never had to look for work outside of us. And so that goes a long way when labor costs are going up, material costs are going up, our guys don't raise their prices because it's just a relationship. They don't have to market, they don't have to collect bills, they don't have to do estimates. It's a super easy relationship for both parties. So you wanna make sure you keep them busy. But here's what I'm going to tell you. None of these are great reasons to buy a fix and flip. And when you compound all three of those together, it re really becomes a sandwich. Really just becomes a sandwich. So I told my partner, I told my wife, I said, hey, don't worry, we really want this deal. And this is what happened. So let's break down the numbers really quick. We bought the deal for 
$112,000. So our lender, Brightsun, actually funds 100% of our purchases. So our contract price with the wholesaler was 112. That means our lender actually gave us $112,000, but our arrangement with them is that we pay them two months of interest up front. And so we actually paid them $3,400 up front. We then brought in a secondary lender named Fidel Homes, and Fidel Homes gave us the renovation budget. We also, when you buy a house, this is kind of bullshit. This sucks. When you buy a house, you have to pay $3,100 in closing costs and lender fees and all sorts of stuff insurance, title fee, blah, 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 blah. What ended up happening is that we put an earmarked budget of $15,000. What does earmarked means? It means we just say, hey, you know, it's gonna be about $15,000. We then close on the property and we raised that $15,000 that we needed for construction from a secondary lender. That secondary lender is right here for 20 grand. So what does that 20 grand do? That 20 grand comes in, it pays for our closing costs and it puts money in our pocket so we can pay for the renovation, not out of our own pocket, but actually out of the pocket of our secondary lender. If you have questions about that, make a comment down below. I wanna make sure that we hammer home on that, but I also don't wanna to be too verbose. Okay, so that $20,000 puts us in a situation where we are out of pocket $0. The challenge with that is if you look, we actually went over budget by $1,533. You can see it in two different locations, okay? We went over budget, and that's pretty typical. I'm okay with going over budget on a renovation, um, and that's about 10, 15%. That's pretty typical for going over budget, all right? Now, here are the closing costs. We have insurance for the duration, Lister Pros, that's the company my wife uses to take all of the listing photos to make sure it's super nice, and she doesn't have to drive all the way over there, mess with the camera, upload it, edit it, it is the best hundred dollars you'll ever spend is just using Lister Pros. Utilities, so that's power, water, gas, all that kind of stuff. And then our hold, another part of our holding cost is that our project manager, Anna, she makes a thousand dollars every time we do a project. We give her a salary plus a thousand dollars for every project that we do so that she's incentivized to do a good job and continually care about our projects above and beyond just her own salary. And then boom, interest. Why are the interest payments so damn high. Well, now I'm gonna go into what went wrong on this project, and the number one re thing that went wrong on this project was, one, the HOA was a pain in the ass. They wanted us to have an inspection of every little thing. This is not even a one bedroom condo. This is a studio apartment. This thing is super teeny. The HOA stopped us from doing work. We bought the property and we couldn't even work on the property for nearly three months. So what does that mean? That means we paid our lender for three months without actually having to do any, being able to do any work. So $6,832 went to a hard money lender. So number one is the HOA sucks. And we ended up cost that ended up costing us probably about four thousand dollars above and beyond what we planned on spending with the hard money lender. Okay, another thing. My wife is unbelievable. She saves us a tremendous amount of money. She actually lists our properties for less than one percent of the sales price. So usually we just give her a flat fee. Then we pay the other agent two point five percent as well. So ultimately. Our total costs, right? When we pay our lender back, we pay our secondary lender back, we pay more interest, we pay more interest, and then we pay closing costs. We had to pay closing costs again. Guys, this is why I like creative finance so much is because we don't have to mess around with all these closing costs as we do in a traditional fix and flip. Look at this, it's a freaking joke. $3,168 to buy it and then I gotta pay somebody else to sell it? Two, $2,123, and that's just our portion. That's the seller's portion. The buyer had their own portion as well. It is crazy how many fees are associated with fix and flips. So when you go into a deal and you're saying, I'm gonna make $10,000 and you're super confident, guys, I'm telling you, you need so much of a buffer, you have no idea why when you're brand new. For us, when we talk to other wholesalers and they send us a deal and it's really skinny, we go, sorry, there's no meat on the bone. Wholesalers get really, really upset with that and say, oh no, I saw this comp and this comp and that comp. 
most wholesalers have actually never fix and flipped and they don't know the pain and anguish that fix and flippers go through. We are both wholesalers and fix and flippers, so we see both sides of the coin. Now, the second thing that went wrong here is that during the renovation, we went over budget. Okay, so there's another chunk of money that we lost and that's okay. I'm actually not even upset about that. I'm perfectly okay with that. Not even upset in the slightest. The third thing that happened is we got an HOA assessment. Okay, and the HOA assessment is when the HOA or the whole entire community is going through a revitalization, they go to all the owners of that, those properties in that HOA and say, you all have to pay a portion of this assessment. And so they divide it up and our portion of the assessment was $10,048.92. Not only did we have additional hard money costs of $4,000 because the HOA sucks, but also because the HOA gave us an assessment during our renovation, we lost another $10,000 totaling $14,000. If the HOA didn't suck and the HOA actually allowed us to work on our property, instead of us losing $5,443, this project would have actually gained us about $9,000. So when you're doing your fix and flip, stop being overly confident. Make sure you have buffer. Make sure you do not plan on appreciation. That sounds like common sense. But when you get confident like we are, we typically do between three and six fix and flips per month the confidence gets super high. And we start rolling the dice and here we go. Here is the result of rolling the dice. And, I, and we're perfectly okay with this. This is part of our education. Now we know when my partner says, no, we need more of a buffer. I go, you know what? Remember that house on Indian school that I was wrong on? You are 100% right. I'm gonna wrap up this video. If you guys have questions down below, I'd love to do a more deep dive on maybe the private lenders. Where did we get our lender from? How do we get our private lender? Whatever it is, that's probably where most people are gonna have their questions. Oh my gosh, where did these magnificent, magnificent unicorns come from that have all this private money that you can fix and flip without any money out of your own pocket? Happy to do more videos about that if you make a comment down below. We're gonna do a part two of this where my wife comes in and she explains what we could have done to see that there was an upcoming HOA assessment, what we didn't do because we suck and we're stupid, and also what we should have learned on this project. So stay tuned for part two of this video of how Pace got his ass kicked, $5,443. See you next time.